And here we are, back home in the Hale gym in Corby. Senor Hale, ¿cómo está? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm um, in you know, MTK. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're well, like IFL. <laughs> Something like that. I pretend I know boxing. I'll try and black it best <laughs> we can. But yeah, how's the um, training been throughout lockdown for you? Good, obviously. Uh, I've been lucky. I've got a nice little set at home. Then I've got the two gyms that I can still train for. So, um, just training. So, I've got no excuse not to train. So, I've been... I've been cracking on as a, 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 a usual, and probably more because I've had a little bit more time on my hand than what I will, what I will have from next week. I mean, this is something that's always been really interesting about you is how consistent you've always been with this mm. kind of thing, and like especially when it comes to working with fighters, working with Gen Pop again, leading by example is always so important. Yeah. But one thing I always found really interesting is your kind of I'd say work life balance with it because again, like for fitness for a lot of people is sort of a sliver of their life. Yeah. Or I say with us and like people in our world, it's such a big part of it. Like, how do you find, like, I don't know, even at home, like, you know, treat meals and things like that with the kids? Like, how do you find that kind of split? Yeah, I, th I think with me, it's always been such a big part of, of, of my life uh, tra training. And when I box, obviously, that is like the hard, just like with you guys with the MMA, that's, that's the hardest, hardest sport to train. So, because I've done that for so many years, just normal training, like doing, doing runs or on the bike or a few pull-ups and like the training I do is hard but it's not that hard mm. it's like I went through so many years of it being having to train like for not much food and so I think tra now it's so enjoyable now because I don't have to get punched in the head that's that's the main that's thing always good. um I can eat I can eat plenty of food plenty of calories so it's completely um enjoyable now and I think that's why so it's not really a chore I mean I don't always feel it but I know if I don't train, I'll be in a really, really bad mood. And I know that enough about myself now. So I just make sure I get it done. I'm the happiest once I've had a f good full week of training. I mean, this is something I always like to sort of appreciate as well, what you're saying there is the training is the fun part. Yeah. It's the competing is where the anxiety is, the nerves, and all that kind yeah, of build yeah. from the stress. Yeah. But again, training in a surplus and not in a deficit. Well, wow. that's it. <laughs> it's uh, so exactly. Fun. It's it's a game ch changer. <laughs> and like I said, I spent so many years D doing that um it's just it's a pleasure now it's 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 nothing compared to what what these mma guys do so well definitely when it comes to being so involved in the fitness industry in this kind of world and again even from like the academic side of things obviously get the qualifications of this yeah. things and the other obviously you know once you get those you realize what you take out what you actually use in the sort of conversion things mm -hmm. on those courses you have to go through is it something you feel is given too much attention in other areas you feel are lacking um i feel like the personal training courses horrendous um i don't think it's definitely it's not move with the times at all it's very old old-fashioned old quite black and white um yeah i i hate the pt course like i say you need to do it um insurance reasons and all of that stuff but um i feel like you actually learn very little um in terms of actually real kind of whether it might be building an engine or even losing weight or building muscle effectively, um, I think that all gets dropped on 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 these courses. Um, but I've done like a high level, like a strength and conditioning one. I've done that in pool, and that was like amazing. So I think the higher up you you go, the better the courses are, and the more you learn. So in terms of the PT side, there's nothing that I wouldn't ne think sh kind of to to take uh, away. I just think it needs completely changing. Um, it needs to be more functional. It needs to move with the times. Um, yeah, it's just like I say, it hasn't moved with the times mm -hmm. at all. That's what I don't like about it. I think I can I can teach somebody more in four weeks. I would say than doing that whole course. So, on what side of it more is it? More the application is more the business side. What do you feel is missing in that? No, I just the the style of training and where the industry is moving. It, I think that course is just being left behind. Um, it does tick off the basics and the ne ne and the necessities and maybe like the safety aspect of some lifts and stuff well but I think I think as a whole it misses large chunks out definitely how to run a successful bu business I think that could that could be in there or in this industry um, and yeah it's, it's just not very versatile f for me it's kind of straight down the line um, you know, every session must start this way, must end this way, but that's not necessarily always the case. Um, yeah, just in, in, in my book, um, 
it's not worth much apart from you need to have it mm. but in it, it it don't like if somebody's coming for me for a job it don't hold much weight with 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 with, with me I'll, I'll know in 10 minutes into a session whether that's the person that i want to have around these gyms or or, or, or not oh 100 because again it's like knowledge and application are very different things to so say you need yeah. the initial knowledge then know what you can and can't use yeah because this is the difference if someone comes with no qualifications and they say repeat you may have the experience but without that kind of safety net to know that's not things you shouldn't do yeah it's yeah a bit of a rogue one yeah 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 de- definitely and like i said i think teaching like the one thing you will learn is like the anatomy like of the body that's a good thing it, it, it would kind of brush up on those things but in terms of application and like a- actual training and like the process you have to take a client through i just don't think it's it's like driving though in it like you kind of you s- learn to drive to pass a test hmm. and then it's after that then you become more kind of com- confident with driving and develop your own s- s- style but it doesn't mean you're a good <laughs> driver because you pass the, the test we know many bad bad drivers so name and shame me included <laughs> me included <laughs> <laughs> again nothing on this is you know legally binding this is all <laughs> hypothetically speaking adam is not liable for anything like this there we have a cover sort of but <laughs> when it comes to this again it's understanding the concepts and why things work and again like yes on your test you had that roundabout you had to go in this lane to go there but mm-hmm. you know full well when this roundabout's there and that roundabout's there yeah different rules different sort of things and yeah. marking again it's more you understand how it works yeah then apply it this is why when with our sessions there's a variety of like con- there's a lot of give and take with it. It's not yeah. a one size fits all thing. Yeah. And one thing GSP said on them Joe Rogan podcast fairly recently. Yeah. Was sort of the efficiency and urgency. Like if you're training for, I'm not going to do the accent. I don't want to get cancelled <laughs> this year. But you're like 25 minute fight, five fives. Yeah. Like five rounds maximum, but it's output. Like yeah. To the point he even sh- made some of his rounds shorter in the gym to get that urgency. In. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. always an interesting one. Like regards yeah. of your own camps, things you've had your own experience with. Yeah. What's that split been like normally? Is your conditioning come from the rounds previously? Where have you got your own um, reference points from? Yeah, we all, I, I sparred uh, down down KSOB. We we, we sparred so so hard, probably four times a week. That's good. Um, it was just yeah. So we had like the best band. We do rounds and rounds and 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 rounds. I'm not like I said. You can't say that's the wrong way because it's not. It's just another way. It's just I don't necessarily think if you want a long career, I don't think that's probably the way to go. I mean, I would say my spars was harder than most of my fights, to be honest with you. Um, but again, it got me conditioned. I always done my own training outside of the gym as well, so I was always one of the fit ones. Um, that's seen me through a lot of fights and yet part of that was numerous rounds of of, of sparring but then the other part was saying discipline myself Uh, but I think kind of thing like in boxing as well we do lots of bag work and and and, and stuff so I would rather do like loads of rounds of that to condition kind of output in terms of punches each Mm -hmm. in each round than necessarily being smacked in the head four times a week over eight nine rounds well, this is something I find quite interesting when it comes to people in the fitness industry, but also in the martial arts industry, yeah. that sort of crossover. Because again, you get people who don't appreciate the intricacies of the sport and they'll try and do it like a standard workout format. Mm. Whereas someone like yourself, who's got that personal preference, for, for personal experience, you can actually make that translate. Yeah. I like that a lot because again, some of the stuff you're doing, like the squeezing stuff with the medicine yeah. balls, the sprint work, again, it's if you try and do an MMA workout, it can get so elaborate and so overcomplicated. But again, yeah. it's the less is more as such yeah 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 d- d- definitely obviously like like I said, i've never done um mma but I, but obviously I, I i did box for many years so i know contact um sports but with mma i just think i do keep it really simple you can like you just said you can really overcome and you see it all on youtube and stuff you can really overcomplicate an mma mm. workout and get too in, in intricate but really it's really it's really simple i have some main components um, and when I'm watching fights, I think, what do I want my fight to be like once, once they've got out of this position or once they've got into that b- position? That's where, like, the squeezing comes from. And um, what I know, I mean, all the fighters I train, they're absolutely s- sick of it probably. But I, <laughs> but I know that in a fight, when the heart rate is really high after a heavy exchange, I know if they get in a position where they can squeeze the life out of their opponent, then they're going to be able to do it. And I think that's really imp- important because as soon as, as soon as that goes, like shape goes, mm. um, output goes, and then you, know, you look, tactics go out the window. That's why, like, I think the conditioning is so important. Is is, is so, so so important. Um, 
and if there's a chance for the finish at the end of the fight I want to know that my fighter's got enough energy to be able to do it I guess Oh, 100% again it's all well and good having a Lamborghini but with no petrol in it you can't go anywhere yeah exactly but this is an interesting premise there but even when it comes to the fatigue in, in, comp- in competing in, tri- in sparring or whatever it's not the same sort of gym format it's not because of X yeah. amount of reps normally it's the pressure normally it's the adrenaline normally it's exactly. the environment yeah. and it's such a weird thing to try to emulate like if you try to explain to someone that you get in a clinch and then you come out of that and for some reason you're gassed for no reason. Yeah, yeah. It's like, how do you, re- what, how yeah. do you even begin to replicate that? Yeah, and <laughs> and like I say, and and you can't replicate a fight, fight, fight night. It's, it's, it's Im, in, impossible. So I always say to everybody, to my fighters, well, like, you, you're you going to be tired in a fight. Don't think you're going to come to me, work hard, then you're not going to feel tired and fatigued in a fight. Like 100% you will do. But it's what can you do when you're fatigued? Can you keep your shape? Can you keep a good poker face? Um, and then, and, and how long we hold off that fatigue pro- mm. pro- pro- process? Because um, you're always going to feel tired in between rounds. Like that is going to, again, it's the pressure, it's the occasion. You cannot replicate that. Um, so that's always going to happen, but it's, it's kind of training your body as well as your kind of mind to when that does happen and that heart rate gets high, you, you don't panic. And, what I give, I, I I think, say someone like Jordan or any of my fight, fighters, what what I give them, I think, is confidence that when my heart rate's high, I know within 30 seconds I'm going to be good to, mm-hmm. to go. Or in between those rounds, if they feel tired, because a, a lot of it, after the first round, fighters are gassing mm-hmm. and then they panic then, thinking, oh my God, I've got three rounds or five rounds left. But I think I give them the confidence before the fight to go, I know I can go at a good pace. I've done it many times um, in... In, 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 in camp where my heart rate's been so high but Adam's made me just go straight on the pads and, and the active recovery that we always do that, oh, yeah. that, I, that I always bang on about that everybody hates but again it's that confidence to, to know I don't care if we get an exchange and we get tired I know I'm going to recover quick because I've done it so many times I know what my body can do and I think that's half it as well it's not panicking when that heart rate gets high whether it's the first round or the second round because again it's just that confidence of I'm going to be right again. I'm I'm going to kind of rebuild. I only need to sit down for 30 seconds and I'll be fine. Or even because of the active recovery that we do, it's I just need to shuffle around the octagon mm. a bit. I can I can I can move my feet a bit, stay out away, and then within 40 seconds, in 40 seconds I'll be fine. Um, I mean, a lot of stuff we done with Jordan before that fight was we done lots of stuff like on the bike where his heart rate would go sky high and then he was actually controlling his heart rate down whilst he was on pads after it, mm. which is crazy because most people find pads hard enough. He was using his pads as rest. He was using his pads for his, to kind of train his heart rate to, to come down while still managing to kind of stay concentrated on the on the combinations I was telling him or, 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 or the movement. Um, I think that's why he looks so fresh for like the whole for the whole fight it was superhuman <laughs> really. well we'll ignore that the final detail there because yeah. again like the thing to get the context is people who I know who know me from school like gen pop people think okay what I'm doing is crazy or whatever yeah. then I say no yeah. <laughs> think about what I'm doing times it by like 10 that's yeah, yeah. fucking Jordan did, but yeah, that's it, exactly. <laughs> but this is something that's I don't know it's an interesting premise you're not everyone can appreciate the same kind of degree that you see a lot of people holding back out of fear of getting gas so the yeah, whole exactly. performance is I then stifle because they're so concerned with exactly. overexerting themselves. Yeah. But in the same vein, people are overexert themselves too excited, too emotional, mm-hmm. and then they end up gassing. Yeah. But that kind of confidence to know, okay, this first win's going to get me out anyway. But yeah. a couple of deep breaths, and we're right. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's always an interesting one. Mm-hmm. And on the note of sort of recovery and back in business and such, obviously yeah. people going back to the gyms, obviously yeah. April 12th coming up. With what do you reckon is the most common mistake you expect people to make coming back from couch to back uh, in the gym? <laughs> probably just jumping straight into what they were doing <laughs> before they left um, we've seen that a lot the last time we'll probably see even more this time um, because again they're so eager to so one I think two things ha- happen one they try and jump into whatever they were doing beforehand and the second thing is because they're so excited to be back in the gym they're in the gym for like two and a half hours <laughs> Just doing, do, doing everything, gotcha. you know, and that's a word. I'm not a massive believer in being in the gym for long. I mean, just some of my sessions can be, can be over two hours long, but I normally train twice a day separately. But if if I, if I haven't got time to do that, I'll just do a big, 
I'll do a big session, but it won't be two hours of lifting weights or two hours of car- cardio. But I'll I'll kind of split them. So, but yeah, so I'm not a big believer. It's like go in, get it done, an hour at most, and then get gone. Um, but yeah, you'll see people just like next week. You see people in here for hours <laughs> and and an hour because they've missed it, and then they they're written off for the, for the next day. So they're the two things that will hundred percent happen. I mean, it is an interesting one because again, well, I'm the the luxury for everyone to be able to train all the time. You'd imagine yourself like imagine not training for X amount of time yeah. before stop. I mean, I've been fortunate to have yourself with remote sessions and everything else we managed to yeah. get sorted out. But again, yeah. it's it's one of those where you can really empathise that kind of enthusiasm you would have. Oh God, yeah. But it's more how you how would you manage that for someone being in that position? What in, in terms of like if they were my client? No, they're excited to come back to the gym. They've had this yeah. time off. They want to come back in guns blazing. What is your sort of rule of thumb to give them? Yeah, j- again, just um, just know where you're at. You know, you you're not where you was before you left. If if you was following some type of program, or even if you was coming in here and and kind of doing the whole bro split thing, whatever you was doing, you're you're not there. So come in, tick off some basic things, um, get on like the the compound lifts again, go nice and light, and just and just kind of like if you've not grabbed a barbell for this amount of time, just get used to used to being under the barbell. You used to kind of cycling that. Um, with really low weight first because you'll still you'll still it's like you're starting that process all over again but believe me you do the right things with just the barbell after so long out and just cycling it cycling it through your body doing different complexes with really low weight even no weight on the bar mm. you will feel it you feel it that night yep. you, f- you feel it then <laughs> then the next day and if you're and if you're feeling it then you've done enough so there's there's no need to be you know trying to jump into big weights straight away even though you might be excited and wearing to to go it's it's a process you know you've got to feel yourself in for that first week come every day if you want but um but just make sure like uh, like i say the weights are nice and light or or, or if you're doing conditioning pieces and uh, make sure they're manageable times five minute rounds three minute rounds um not anything crazy that you've like that you did before you, you've seen on YouTube that you can't wait to try. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, give it time. I'm not going to call them out, but definitely see people try and stuff. If, if, <laughs> try what you want, have some fun, don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, but um, one thing you've sort of mentioned there again that temptation to sort of come back, get sore as a reference as a good workout. Where yeah. do you sit with that? Where do DOMS, what does DOMS mean to you, Serge? Um, yeah, I mean, it's that old saying if it's hurting, it's working. Um, <laughs> so I think it, it, it's kind of a I, I quite like the feeling. I probably chase it now, um, but there, there's something there's something in it. I, that's what I was saying about the um, just having no weight on the barber. But you do the right complexes, and it it, it it will hurt. And then you've done enough. Like if you can feel it, then then the ne- the next day you put your muscles under enough for, for fatigue to then want to improve. So th- then that's fine. Um, so if you can do that on a lightweight, then just do it. And and then once you don't feel that, then you, then you know your body is adjusting, and then you can go up the weight, or then you can do longer conditioning rounds. So, I, I think I think DOMS DOMS are good. They're all, always quite a good indicator of that you've done something um, worthwhile. I I I guess just not if it goes too over the top. I mean, with, with my shred classes and stuff. I mean the. The, the messages of abuse are okay <laughs> people can't be sitting on the toilet can't be going down the stairs but that is a byproduct of training especially when you start it but but it soon goes i oh. mean i mean you're moaning about your your legs this morning still it's a good, pro- it's good problem to have don't <laughs> worry about that. Okay, this is half a thing in itself and when it comes to the sort of gen pop again i'm saying that very deliberately because again people who are full invested to fitness and yeah. fighting competing they have to be so I don't know what narrow, sort of tunnel vision on there. Mm-hmm. Whereas people who have other lives and responsibilities, again, it's harder to manage that and make the same kind of allocation. Because yeah. I see on your question polls, you get, you know, maybe flipping, maybe because asking where people say they want to get that kind of that physique, the kind of performance. And again, yeah, it's a very hard thing to appreciate people in with all these commitments to try to aspire to look a certain way, which requires a lot more hours. Yeah, like how do you advise people when it comes to these sort of things of wanting to completely make these changes without being able to allocate that amount of time? Yeah, it's just you, it's being realistic for one, which nobody wants to hear that. But 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 it is, and not in realistic on on where you want to get to. That that's fine. You can have the a- aspirations to have the best physique, 
on the planet i've got no issue with that um but you you've got to break it down in into into stages and you have to realize the person you're looking at whether it be me or whether it be somebody on instagram or or whatever it might be they've gone through certain kind of um what's the word like like it's just certain sex sections and kind of they've ticked off certain things Mm -hmm. they've got lots of skin in the game to be able to get to where wherever they've got to whether it's the way they look or or just how fit they are i mean really now for me i train because i really love it and and i like to be strong and i like to be fit but my biggest thing is is being fit like that's what i really love so and like whatever my body is is now just a byproduct of that i like to look in shape but I I, I, pref- I like training more if if, if that makes sense. So mm. then, whatever my physical body is, it's just a byproduct of me l- loving training. Um, so, but like I said, I've got lots of skin in the game. I've done it for like I've probably not had a week off training. I'd say since I was about ten. <laughs> yeah, it's it's mad when it's mad when you, I, I, I'm not always trained hard. I'm not always trained say the way I do now. It was boxing yeah, and yeah. running, and then I stopped boxing and 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 it, it was weights and then. And now it's kind of more functional stuff and on the bike, but um, but I can't, I literally can't remember the, the last time I would have a full week, like a full week off, no, tr- doing nothing. I, I, it's probably since I was 10, 11, since when I started. And again, that's it's that consistency. I'm not saying it takes that amount yeah. of time because like I said, I've done different things, but um, you've just got to realize them kind of, um, yeah, the steps you gotta go go through, break it down into monthly goals, um, and tick them off that 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 way. One hundred percent. And this is something that is quite hard to appreciate in the moment because when you're starting these new programs on your new deficit, on your diets, and everything else, it's a very long process. Yeah. And to see a finished products per se, again, it's think okay, when does that become that, and then yeah, and it's not linear. It's not the same kind of A is going to make B and so on and so yeah. forth. It's not how these things work. Yeah, it's a hard thing to appreciate. And also, when it comes to goal setting, like again, you're saying yours is around your feeling. Again, you're yeah. feel fit. And again, if you look a certain way, yeah. it encourages that because again, you can see the again, it makes sense. Eh? It's producing that byproduct. Yeah. Whereas I feel when you get on the start of these things, it's quite hard to see where it's going to go. Like God, yeah, yeah. Well, regards to goal that. setting for people, do you rather them go for a, an RPE sort of thing to feel a certain way in themselves? Is it more? Setting like targets performance wise, what sort yeah, of things I, do you reckon you? I, I think setting targets performance wise is a good way to do it because then you're coming off that whole f- physical kind of um, side of things, which you can become quite obsessed uh, 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 over. If you go on performance, then you're trying to hit numbers. You're trying to bet yourself that way, which means you get the best out of the sessions because you're like, I really want to beat it this 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 week. I, I, you know, the last thing I want to do is get so, so you always give it a bit more when, when, when you're chasing some, something. And then again, if you're training in that way with that intensity and that kind of smartness, then whatever you want, f- kind of physicality wise, again, mm. it's a byproduct f- f- from it. So I'd rather that than anyone go, oh, I want this inch by b- b- bicep or any of that. I'd, I'd rather just, just let's, let's do some performance goals. And then if you hit them, then you know, like I say, you as a byproduct of that, then you, I'm sure you have the body that body that you want. But it's about consistency. It's about patience, and it's about just in, making sure you enjoy the process rather than obsessing over the end goal uh, too too much. You know, like enjoy the process, enjoy the feeling that you can still train and enjoy that feeling that you're just bettering yourself because that in itself is a good thing you you know there's a lot of people that are not doing that so just enjoy the process of thinking at least i'm bettering myself you know it might take me two years to to get there but at least i'm in that process and i've got something to work towards a lot of people are not even that far down the line yet where i empathize for a lot of people i feel is where they expect that once they have the abs once they have the muscles and so on and so forth they're going to be you know, roll credits off in the sunset. Yeah. This, all the problems are then solved. Yeah, yeah. But this is why it's really important to question why you want these certain things. Because yeah. again, with social media especially, like you see all these Instagram models, you think, okay, I don't like the way I look. I want to look like them. So mm. ergo, I've got to do what they do, live their life, drink their booty and all these kind of things. Yeah, they yeah. sort of do. And as much as I say that very flippantly and sarcastically, it's not too far off to how people actually do live their lives. God, God, yeah. And it's so concerning. Like yeah, regards yeah. of 
social media influencers, how do you feel people would be better managing that kind of, I don't know, external factor? Yeah, it's hard, you know. It's my biggest worry, really, with the kids that I have and um, kind of what they're going to grow up in because I think with abuse kind of technology so so much in this day and age now and social media and stuff i think we've completely like we've gone way over the top with it and we've we, we we're not trusted with it <laughs> you know it's like having a reverse effect like obviously it's even in internet and, and, and social media there's many good things it comes out of but we're slowly kind of tip tipping that end where it's now it, it, it causes more hurt and kind of depression and mm. anxiety then it does end that then it does any any good but again you've just got to be in your own like kind of your own your own lane with stuff like that um and that's a that's a personal thing I, it has a massive effect on the fitness industry but um half of these pictures are you know they can be photoshopped you you you, you don't know what's go, mm. go, go, going on so a man or a, a woman will look at that certain picture and go, that's what I want to look like. But, you know, they've not been in this sh studio for three hours trying to get that picture per perfect and um, the right lighting and all that sort of stuff. Mm. So you, I think you've got to take everything with a pinch of salt and kind of just stay in your lane, stay on your on your path of, of what you want to do. But again, it's, it's, it's picking your goals, isn't it? Sometimes when you're going for that kind of physical goal of you want to look a certain way, um, often that's not for the right reasons, if that makes sense. Because, like I say, once you get there, then what happens then? Well, this is the rest of the story. And this is why these things are important. When people say, oh, "I don't care what anyone else says," I take the pinch of salt. Still, I think yeah. the reason you care is something to be addressed, not so much the person saying it. Like, I don't care if Joe Boggs down the pub wants to tell me why I can't strike. Yeah, that's their business. I'll, you know, chin them. It's their business. Yeah, but it's more so. <laughs> Why does it bother me? Okay, because maybe yeah. my ideals are being questioned. Maybe it bothers me because I'm not confident in the process or so yeah, and yeah. so forth. You get a bit yeah. more of, okay, why is this bothering yeah. me? That, that feels more important, especially when it comes to these things. Yeah. Why does it make me feel a certain way? Because maybe I know that if I try and look a certain way, like if you say to people who have these sort of aesthetic-based goals, yeah. what is the ideal number you'd hit? And they wouldn't have an answer. No, no. Again, that's the half the one. problem. As much yeah. as that constant discomfort encourages like growth encourages that step it's also managing that expectation yeah and it's so concerning especially when it comes to people getting stuck in at the start this is why this yeah. is so prominent to speak about because people coming back they're in a similar kind of boat they're feeling a bit out of shape they're not yeah. who they were yeah and they want to look like someone else all this yeah. sort of thing it's managing that kind of expectation yeah like where do yeah. you feel is like the best sort of i don't know starting point for them to start to deal with those kind of i don't know thoughts yeah it's the biggest changes i see you know if i'm not training fight, fighters is just like a general client client trying to lose weight or, or put on weight whatever it might be um the biggest kind of like buzz the biggest buzz i get will be from like from the confidence mm -hmm. as in like what what kind of losing a bit of weight or getting into shape brings them that way so just knowing that whatever position they're in now is like it's it's a it's a process like again people people do become more confident once they feel more 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 confident when they see the changes happening in their um body and if that makes you happy then great then go for it but then you've got to address some certain other things if if it still don't um but again just taking everything in in different everyone's different basically mm -hmm. I, I i think that's 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 the thing. Start start off small with small little goals and just see how they make you feel first. That's what I would say. Oh, hundred percent. And something to really note from the way Adam's been answering these questions. When we talk about the general public, the general fitness for a lot of people, this isn't one size fits all. This isn't okay. Just do this. Everyone does one workout. Everyone's going to be all happy and everyone's going up in the sunset. No problem. Yeah. This is case by case. And again, as much as people want to look for generic advice for certain things, again speak to people ask these questions do these things because again you have your own experience as to what works for you this is why adam's time and experience is transferable because he's a learned concepts that work for him what haven't worked for him and again it's it adds layers to this sort of thing mm. and to sort of i don't know round things off a little bit it's it's a tricky one but it's this thing it comes down to you know when everyone has any kind of mental health issues the first response everyone has is go for a run or something else let's yeah. go to some exercise and yes but that's not the that's not the only thing yeah. <laughs> maybe a few conversations again reach out to your friends reach out to the people there 
Uh, there's a few questions to sort of leave you on. These are the ones I ask everyone. I want your yeah. honest opinion, your first things there. Yeah. So you're about to compete. Yeah. You're about to warm up. There you are. In walks you. What advice do you give to yourself to perform in the best headspace? Remember all those hard, long sessions that you've hopefully done. <laughs> um, and like this is a time where I don't necessarily concentrate on on that point, I didn't necessarily concentrate on um, the winning or losing at that aspect. It was more like you've worked so hard to show everybody your skill set and what you can do. Just concentrate on on that. Like you're lucky enough to be able to perform, do something you love in front of people. In front of people, um, so do that. Go and enjoy yourself. That's what I'd say. And the reason why these answers are so prominent, because again, from Adam's experience, his own insecurities, his own things he's had to deal with over those hurdles, this is the prompt. And again, it's enjoying what you're doing, because again, yeah. you don't go up to these runs and all the rest of it to train in a camp because of, for a laugh. No, because you, you, you want it, it for this moment. Because yeah. you want it. Yeah, yeah. And again, when the moment comes, remember what you asked for, it's so important. Yeah, yeah. Now, this Definitely. is a personal preference, and yeah. uh, I imagine you have to be different to mine, but post win, hand raised, got the belt, got the plastic medal you've bled for. Yeah. What is the takeaway? What is the delivery? Other than the intense flavor box will take us right. Yeah, of, of, of course. If it wasn't for that, <laughs> save the clothes. If that wasn't for that Reese, then well, you could beat before they opened. That's the excuse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, probably an Indian takeaway for me: chicken tikka masala. Nothing crazy. Um, I don't like spice. I was a council kid, so we were <laughs> <laughs> playing playing food. Fish and chips. And yeah. Coke, so chicken tikka masala, coconut rice. Peshwari naan, onion badges. That's that's, that's that's look thing, at that. Man. Bang bang bang. Just bang, bang, every, bang. every time the same thing. Yeah. Stick to what you know. Consistency. Yeah, and that's everything. it, mate. That, that's it. And the last one. We'll say for people coming to the classes. Someone comes to your class. Yeah. All the excitement, full of beans. Wants to do like we said earlier. People in the gym, they want to do everything. Want to do all the classes. Yeah. What's a rule of thumb you give them to start their fitness journey on the right foot? Consistency. <laughs> get on to do anything so. <laughs> cool so guys make sure to check out Adam's page his business again he's got facili- uh, facilities in Kettering and Corby so regards to getting involved with you how can people get stuck in with your gym with your classes what's the best way of contacting you yeah um, probably on Instagram it's when I'm on the most that I'll respond to the most um, so yeah um, hit me up on Instagram um, you'll see lots about the gyms there but any questions shout perfect I'm sure to check out our sponsor we've got English Hypnotist so Richard Hart again when it comes to mental management of things albeit overcoming certain hurdles self-sabotage or even getting the, getting the best version of you out there a conversation with Richard can be absolutely game changing again I've had many conversations with him about certain things I'm dealing with and again it's it helps a lot it's, I've got some testimonials on my page game changing also good performance nutrition so Dan Good again he's been involved in the sport of MMA professional fighter he's got his gym he's got his family and again a very per- people orientated business very people orientated person and with conform- good performance nutrition the products are good as you can imagine <laughs> very well affordable and again the quality the taste the mixes what more do you want again local business supports other people as well and again, the products are quality thank you very much my friend pleasure I'll see you in the gym, yeah, April 12th.